What if I told you that thousands of years ago, humans weren't just surviving, they were hooking up with an entirely different species, and that some of us are still carrying their DNA like an awkward family secret? No, this isn't some plot twist from a sci-fi soap opera or an off-brand time travel romance. This is actual science. Verified, genome-sequenced, peer-reviewed weirdness. And it's one of the most uncomfortable, eyebrow-raising discoveries in human history. We're talking about Neanderthals, the extinct side branch of humanity that once stomped around Ice Age Europe, built stone tools, hunted mammoths, and apparently flirted. These weren't your typical cavemen grunting in a cave they, were a whole species with brains nearly as big as ours, bodies built like bouncers, and social habits that we're only beginning to understand. And as it turns out, some of those habits involved getting very close to Homo sapiens. We've always known they were our closest relatives, but fossils and stone tools can only tell you so much. For decades, scientists tried to piece together their daily lives what they ate, how they survived winters, how they communicated, but then they stumbled upon one very personal, very uncomfortable clue. A genetic clue. One that gave us a shockingly intimate glimpse into their world, their sex lives. Yeah, it sounds absurd, but prehistoric pillow talk might actually be the missing link in understanding how humans spread across the planet, how cultures blended, and why your uncle might still have suspiciously strong eyebrow ridges. So today, we're not just dusting off fossils. We're pulling back the mammoth skin blankets and exposing one of the strangest and steamiest evolutionary stories ever uncovered. Before we open the world's oldest dating profile, smash that subscribe button, and then drop your weirdest ancient question in the comments. Think of it as sending a love letter across 50,000 years. And hey, if the caves are rockin', don't come knockin'. Especially not with a flaming torch. Let's be real, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals didn't just awkwardly wave across a glacier and go their separate ways. They interacted, and not in a polite evolutionary handshake kind of way. They got busy, frequently. And we know this not because some conspiracy blogger shouted it on a forum, but because the evidence is sitting right there in our genes. Scientists sequenced the DNA from a 40 000, 000 year-old human skeleton, and the results were wild. 11% of its DNA? Neanderthal. That's not, maybe they cuddled by a fire once. That's definitely shared a sleeping mat during the Ice Age. That 11% still stands as the most Neanderthal-rich human we've ever found. But even today, fragments of Neanderthal DNA show up in the genomes of people from Asia, Europe, and even parts of the Middle East. So if your cousin Greg eats raw steak, can't work a smartphone, and insists on living in the wood, she might just be more connected to his Ice Age roots than you thought. Now here's where it gets even weirder. Most people assume Neanderthals were some rough draft of humans primitive, awkward, and destined to be replaced. So it's easy to believe these ancient hookups were rare. Maybe a last minute act of desperation before Neanderthals vanished forever. But that's not how it went down. These weren't one-off encounters or lonely night mistakes. The interbreeding happened over generations. It was regular. It was widespread. And it suggests something far more complex about early human relationships, something that scientists are still trying to fully wrap their heads around. And this is just the beginning. Humans and Neanderthals weren't just two strangers passing awkwardly in a prehistoric snowstorm. They coexisted for thousands of years. Same planet, same terrain, same survival problems, and apparently the same bedrooms. Sure, in the grand sweep of geological time, their overlap was barely a blip, but in human terms, it was long enough for thousands of very personal encounters, and not the shy, stolen glance kind. We're talking about a pattern something, regular, habitual, and surprisingly extensive. Turns out, the idea of one random interspecies hookup in a chilly cave isn't even close to the truth. According to genetic evidence, these weren't isolated events. They were widespread. Over tens of thousands of years, thousands of these intimate cross-species interactions took place. 
And this wasn't just some prehistoric, gossip-worthy dramate rewrote entire chapters of human history. One of the biggest revelations? Neanderthals never set foot in Africa. Not once. So how did our ancestors bump into them? Well, it means early humans must have started leaving Africa way earlier than scientists used to think. The Great Migration, once thought to have started around 60,000 years ago, may have begun more than 100,000 years ago. That's a huge timeline shift in of thousands of years earlier than expected. Our ancestors weren't just wandering, they were exploring, migrating, and apparently forming some very complicated cross-species relationships along the way. But here's where it starts getting dark. It's tempting to imagine these ancient pairings as romantic, in a primitive kind of way to species, bonding over fire, mammoth meat, and the struggle to not freeze to death. But genetically, they were vastly different. Like, different species, different. They might have looked somewhat alike, but under the skin, they were worlds apart. Which brings up an uncomfortable truth. If communication between them was limited or non-existent, then the idea of mutual attraction starts to fall apart. What we may be looking at isn't some sweet caveman romance. It could have been something uglier, more aggressive. A harsh blend of dominance, territorial conflict, and survival instinct. One species slowly rising to dominate the land while the other faded into extinction. And while Neanderthals did pass down a few useful tools literally and figuratively like early fire use, tool making, and perhaps even basic shelter ideas, they also left behind some less desirable gifts, like medical issues. Really weird, extremely specific medical issues. Let's talk about one, the ancient genetic glitch known as HLAB-51. Sounds like a robot from a Star Wars knockoff, right? But no, this charming little strand of DNA is responsible for a condition called Bechet's disease. It causes inflammation, mouth ulcers, eye pain, and yes ulcers where you definitely don't want ulcers. Scientists have traced this gene back to our earliest intermingling with Neanderthals. So somewhere during that cross-species cave party, this genetic time bomb slipped into the Homo sapiens gene pool. And it's still here. Still spreading through families today like an unwanted email forward from 50,000 years ago. And if you thought that was the end of it, sorry. There's more. That ancient Neanderthal code has also been linked to a laundry list of modern health issues. Crohn's disease. Lupus. Type 2 diabetes. Autoimmune problems. Basically, if you've ever sat in a doctor's office filling out forms and wondering why your body hates you, there's a non-zero chance it all started, because two distant ancestors got freaky on a mammoth hide under questionable lighting. Conditions. Thanks for the DNA, Neanderthals. And the ulcers. Imagine Jurassic Park, except instead of resurrecting dinosaurs, the ancient mosquito just gives everyone a surprise STD in a family tree with no branches. That's basically what our DNA is. A fossilized minefield packed with ancient surprises some genuinely fascinating, and some, the kind of thing you'd rather not know before dinner. See, when it came to passing down their genetic goodies, our ancestors didn't exactly curate a premium package. Instead, they handed us a chaotic grab bag of biological quirksome brilliant, some bizarre, and a few that probably should have stayed buried under the permafrost. Now, Modern humans and Neanderthals were already wildly different in all sorts of ways brain shape, body build, cultural habits, and presumably their enthusiasm for personal grooming. But one of the most disturbing differences? Their approach to family dynamics, and not the who forgot to take out the mammoth bones kind of family drama. We're talking about relationships that would make even the boldest medieval royals say, whoa, dial it back. Unless you're flying a Lannister banner, most people agree that romantic connections within the immediate family tree are a massive no, but apparently Neanderthals didn't get the memo. In a remote cave in Siberia, archeologists discovered a small, unassuming toe bone, just a single fossil. But what that toe revealed cracked open one of the strangest cases in prehistoric genetics. Let's call her Tina, Tina Notos. 
And while Tina's missing digits might have been the least of her problems, her DNA told a story way more troubling. After sequencing her genome, scientists discovered her parents were either half-siblings or an aunt and her nephew. Let that horror show of a family reunion sink in. But it wasn't just Tina. This wasn't a freakish anomaly. Her DNA showed one of the highest levels of inbreeding ever recorded, not just among Neanderthals, but in any species studied so far. Which suggests this wasn't an isolated cave habit. This was a recurring theme, a cultural norm, and it didn't come without consequences. Inbreeding as we know from just about every biology class and every royal family history, tends to unleash a host of genetic nightmares mutations, birth defects, chronic illnesses. And that's exactly what scientists found riddled throughout the Neanderthal genome. Their DNA reads like a prehistoric medical chart scribbled in red flags, weak immune systems, bone deformities, susceptibility to disease. It's nature's way of saying, seriously, don't date your cousin. But before we move on from the bedroom habits of the extinct, there's one more detail that's both strangely informative and awkwardly revealing. For the sake of scientific thoroughness, and definitely not because anyone asked, researchers also compared the anatomy of Neanderthal males to modern humans. Specifically, their, uh, downstairs departments. The result? Practically identical. Same structure. Similar size, same equipment, just with a few more calluses and a total disregard for deodorant. This finding may come as a surprise to anyone who imagined Neanderthals as some drastically different species, but it reinforces the uncomfortable truth. Biologically, they were a lot like us. A little shorter, a lot stronger, and really into keeping things in the family, but fundamentally, still human in all the essential ways. So. No need for anyone to get weirdly proud or overly confident here. You might share 2% of your DNA with a species that didn't understand family boundaries or soap. So maybe, just maybe, don't start printing t-shirts about it. The Neanderthals are gone. Extinct. Erased from the timeline like they hit leave meeting on the evolutionary Zoom calendar, never logged back in. No comebacks, no sequels. No surprise appearances. So yes, take a moment. Pour one out for our prehistoric plus ones. For decades, scientists have wrestled with the question, what really happened to them? Was it climate? Did temperatures swing so wildly that even their mammoth skin ponchos couldn't keep up? Did Homo sapiens simply outsmart them developing better tools, better tactics, and maybe, just maybe, a meaner survival instinct? Or did we do what humans have an unfortunate history of doing when faced with competition? Slowly, strategically, wipe them out? But then there's one idea that flips the whole extinction story on its head. A theory that says Neanderthals didn't disappear in the usual dramatic fashion. They were absorbed, merged, blended into us. One awkward interspecies encounter at a time. No big battle. No sudden collapse, just lots of mingling over generations. Basically, Neanderthals didn't go out with a bang. They faded into the genetic background. They sexed their way into the gene pool and quietly vanished. Imagine if the ending of a sci-fi invasion movie was just prolonged awkward dating followed by full assimilation. Like if Galactic Overlords 9 ended in a group hug in some shared cave real estate they left behind a breadcrumb trail of DNA fragments still scattered in the modern human genome. But despite all this biological evidence, their final moments remain a mystery. We don't know what their daily lives looked like, what kind of jokes they cracked, whether they had rituals, favorite chill spots, or preferred moss brands for sitting, snoozing, or seducing. What we do know is that they definitely got familiar with early humans and were using familiar the same way your college roommate said they were just talking to someone they kept sneaking off with after midnight. Still, for all the heat implied in the fossil record, we don't have the full picture. Was it consensual? Was it desperation in a harsh world? Was it romance? Or just a blurry mistake 
made under bad torch lighting? No one really knows. Though, let's be honest, there's a high chance someone on the internet has already drawn a dramatic reimagining with hearts and bad haircuts. Maybe one day, a well-preserved skeleton or another genetically loaded toe will fill in the blanks. Maybe we'll uncover a burial site with clues about how they lived, loved, and laughed. Or maybe we'll just keep playing prehistoric detective piecing together ancient love stories from broken bones and stubborn DNA. Because here's the truth. Every ancient rendezvous, every weird coupling, every shared firelight moment between Neanderthal and humanity's part of the long, messy, bizarre story of us. And something tells me, if they knew we were studying their ancient love lives like a bunch of nosy neighbors, they probably wouldn't mind. They might even grunt a laugh. So what surprised you most about our extinct roommates? Was it the Towbone family drama? The genetic souvenirs? The disappearing act via bedroom activity? Let us know in the comments. And if your thirst for ancient weirdness still isn't satisfied, don't worry, we've got more strange tales from the forgotten side of history coming your way.